Welcome back to Mad Ginger Customs. I'm Dave. And I'm Jeff. And on this episode, we are going to not only teach Jess how to TIG weld, we're going to teach you how to TIG weld. We're going to go through TIG welding settings, brief overview of machines, and we're going to drop some beads to make sure she can drop beads and you can drop beads. <laughs> Let's go. All right, guys. So um, today we're going to teach you how to TIG weld and we're going to go over different types of TIG welders, right? So dependent upon your budget and dependent upon how old a machine you buy, there's a couple different types of machines. Um, basically rectifier and inverter machines. Rectifiers are gonna be like the size of a refrigerator. They're old, it's coiled up um, a copper. It's kind of antiquated technology, but they're super reliable and that's why you're still gonna see them around because they run forever. What the new jam is, inverter machines, right? Inverter machines are lighter, they're technically more inexpensive to make, I believe, because the prices have come way down. Um, we're going to be dealing with Arc Captain machines. We, uh, we really love our Arc Captain products here. Um, they are a channel sponsor. We were sent this MIG 200 6-in-1. Now, this thing does MIG and TIG, and it's DC. It also will DC um, MIG aluminum with a spool gun. What, what we're going to concentrate on today is the AC-DC TIG we're going to get into machine setup. We're going to get into torch setup. We're going to get into a little bit of tungsten selection. That is very, very deep as far as what you're doing, your materials and such. Um, but this is going to be a very, not a dumbed down version, but a basic version. You guys have to understand, I am not a professional TIG welder, but I have TIG welded for over 20 years successfully. Um, and I feel that I have enough knowledge on this subject that I can tell you in a manner that's easy to digest and that you guys can pick up one of these machines and literally after watching this video, I think you could lay down a decent beat or at least get some seat time and run a beat. This is the new uh, Arc Captain TIG 200P. Now this has AC and DC capability. Also what's important and we're gonna get into it a little later this is a square wave machine, but it's also a triangular wave machine. I, I know that won't make sense if you've never TIG welded before. So this machine um, is very easy to use. I do have a Thermal Arc Pro Wave 185, and it is, it's kind of complex as you're kind of moving through the settings. I find the Arc Captain stuff to be easy to use. Our MiG 200, I literally took it out of the box. I didn't read any instructions and I just went at it. You never read instructions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why do you gotta tell them that? Okay. So on this machine, you, you, you got the multifunction knob. It's gonna bring your amps up and down. It's also gonna give you um, the display. This is, this is not, this will not be about this machine. This will be about any machine. This machine has a pulse feature. Uh, most higher end machines do have a pulse feature. What that does is you can either turn it on pulse, on or off. When you're not on pulse, basically when you lean into that pedal, you are regulating heat and amperage and voltage through your pedal input. Or if you don't have the pedal because the pedal is an option, you can get the pedal, I would highly suggest you do. But if you just have a clicky button, which also this is a this is a 26 torch, we'll talk about that. Basically, it's an on-off. You push it down, and it stays whatever the preset voltage is, and then you let off, and it shuts off. If you use a pulse feature unit, you turn it on. What this is going to do, and it, it's going to allow you. You have some parameters to set with this. It's confer the beeps are confirming where you're doing. It lets you ramp up. You keep the pedal down. And then it backs you down, brings you back up, backs you down, brings you back up. So what that allows you to do is puddle, smaller puddle, puddle, smaller puddle, and you add to that puddle, and that's going to give you uh, easier use doing production dependent upon your skill level. We'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, I find this machine super easy. Uh, it's 220 volt or 120 volt, comes with an adapter. We're not going to talk too much about that. It comes with a regulator. You guys need an argon tank if you are going to TIG weld. That is non-negotiable. You need to get yourself an argon tank. It's the only way this works. This does not feed material. It uses the tip to transfer the, the, the uh, a voltage to the workpiece. 
And then you're going to fill as you go, unlike a MIG welder. This unit's easy to adjust. It tells you right on it. What are we doing here? AC TIG. AC is going to be what you're going to use for aluminum. Okay? Now, in the old machines, you would have to change your input with your lugs. You would have to switch polarity. The machine does that internally. Most TIG welders that have AC capability will do that. You tap it on DC. What's DC going to do? Your steel, your uh, titanium, your stainless steel. It also has MMA. What's MMA? Stick welding. We're not getting into that in this video. This machine will stick though. Um, but if you have a TIG welder, why wouldn't you TIG weld, right? It gives you 2T, 4T, or, and I believe it, it might even do spot. It does spot too, so spot welder too. So 2T is, is when you pull this button down or you push your pedal down, the machine's gonna weld until you let off the pedal or off the switch. 4T, you just touch the button once, you weld, and then you hit the button again to shut it off. Spot technology is you're going to hit the button and it's going to give you a predetermined, you, did, you set the setting, predetermined length of spot weld. At the bottom here, this is going to be your square wave selection. Shows that your wave is a square or your triangular wave. Now, we're going to touch on that briefly because the majority of machines do not have triangular wave technology. Um, I actually can't think of any other one that does. I think the majority of them are square wave. Square wave is perfectly fine. Triangular wave is key for sheet metal and thin metal. It gives you more control and it gives you a little less penetration so you have less blow through. Um, we'll try that in a future video because we have a ton of sheet metal to do and the project we bought is yep. literally a trash can and we're gonna have to do a lot of welding on it. So maybe you can do that. Uh, fun. <laughs> so uh, multifunction knob. You know, this comes into play if you want to do pre-purge, post-purge, that's for your gas. So basically, pre-purge is when you hit the button or the, or the pedal. Pre-purge is how much gas comes out before it starts welding. You got that? Sure. Post-purge <laughs> is how long the gas stays on after you've completed your weld. Okay. Guys, when you TIG weld, a couple things that are important. Do not use a fan when you're welding, because you're going to blow your shielding gas away. Your shielding gas is going to create a bubble around your welding area. So the oxygen in the air and the contaminants in the air don't contaminate your weld. So don't run a fan. And if you are in a situation where you have, you're in a garage like we are, or a barn, <laughs> if you keep your doors open and it's breezy, I can guarantee you, you got, you're going to affect your weld. And that doesn't go for just TIG welding, that's MIG welding too. Anything that uses shielding gas, you really need to cover that bubble. Now, different amperages, different types of material, and um, different depths of your tungsten require different amounts of coverage for gas. So, on the side of almost every welder, on this one it's on the side, right? Our captain gives you a, a, an easy startup guide. It says, what are, you, what are you welding? You weld in aluminum, you weld in stainless, and it'll tell you, you should use X amount of cubic feet on your gauge, right? Now, this will only tell you what it's using in cubic feet when you're engaging the solenoid, so you have to be running the machine. So if you tap it, you see how it goes up to, to 20? 20? I would implore you guys to run a little bit more shielding gas than what's recommended, especially if you're new. I will never run anything under, say, 20, 20 on the gauge. You can. A lot of people do that because they regulate their coloring because your coloring is uh -huh. technically, well, it's contamination, really. Like when you weld and you see the guys that make art with welding and they use the colors, they're changing their angle and they're changing how much shielding gas oh. they use. So if you guys want to play around with that, you want to get some purples, you want to get golds, <laughs> you can turn your shielding fancy. gas up and down. You can get fancy with it. You <laughs> certainly can. That's basically how, how this machine runs. All these machines are very similar. You got a ground cable, you have the torch cable. This is considered a torch, mm -hmm. okay? These come in all different sizes. This is a 26 torch, which for me is actually fairly large. Um, I run a 17 on my other machine or a 17 flex head, meaning you can take here and it bends over. So in case you need to get in somewhere where you can't, they also make an offset torch 
and they make um, very large cups. If you guys go on Instagram, um, there's a company called Ferric, and they make these massive cups with massive gas lenses to get all the gas coverage. They make drag behind gas lenses that are square. Um, I think there's a uh, there's a page called I think it's I am I think it's called I am a girl welder or something like that. She does amazing work, guys. You should follow that. She uses a welding positioner. Um, super primo welding. I love it. Let's talk uh, torch setup. To get yourself going on any machine, you're going to have to assemble your torch, right? That entails a couple things. So that entails um, cups, caps, and there's collets in here. So I'm going to disassemble this for you in front of you so you see this. Now this cap on the back side, there's an O-ring, right? That is important. It is important to this, this unit as a whole seals from here to here. So all your shielding gas comes out here and you're not leaking around your seals, okay? So that's gonna come off. There's different size caps. You can put a shorty on in case you need to get in somewhere tight. You know, you, you cut your tungsten down, resharpen, and you put your shorty on. This is gonna pull out. These collets are specific to what size tungsten you are using. This is a 330 seconds. I would suggest you guys start with a, a 1 16th or a 330 seconds. Uh, going any bigger than that is not beneficial on a machine that's, you know, sub 200 amps. It's just going to make this m more bulky and harder to use. I would say 330 seconds is a good place to start. Um, and it is dependent upon this collet size. Now, in here, you also have your cup, right? Your cup is what's going to divert your shielding gas down to your work. Is that number the size? The number is the size. That's right. Now, if you look at this, it tells you this is good for basically up to one eighth. OK, so you can put up to one eighth tungsten in here. And then all this is. It's a gasket, really. I think it's some type of nylon. But it just comes over and basically you're pushing against it to seal because it's tapered. This is not mandatory. This is a suggestion. I don't run TIG torches that do not have gas lenses in them. And I'm going to show you what a gas lens is. Now, this gas lens is beat through the floor. This unit is very old. I have more of these. Was that originally this color? It was, yeah. These start off as pink. Oh, I see in the inside. If you buy the Furic or the Furic ones, they, they make these in white. Mm. They also make them um, glass, which is in here. I'm going to show you. Oh, yeah. I see them in there. So a gas lens, what this does is this has a screen here. And what this does is it diverts the gas and diffuses it so you get a bigger area of coverage right so it comes in one side and then it comes out the other see how dirty that yes. is this is so very old so you need a series of different gaskets to be able to be allowed to use something like this what you can do is buy a kit now i don't know who sells these kits they sell them on amazon they sell furic sells these kits if you buy a furic kit like this it's about 200 dollars. these are not cheap um i would say start off with something like this this is economical so what this is, it comes with, you know, it's a small gas lens, not like the nice spheric ones, but it's better than nothing, right? So you use this and you can also have, these are glass. <laughs> they make them out of Pyrex, I believe, and glass. Oh, yeah. So this sits in here and then you can see your puddle better and it's going to give you a larger area for coverage. So I'm not going to assemble this new machine with anything, any of the gas lenses, anything. I want you to see what the machine will do brand new out of the box, how you would receive a machine without having to buy all kinds of extra, extra accoutrements. I would highly suggest you running a gas lens. Now, let's talk tungsten. Tungsten is the electrode that transfers your voltage to your workpiece. 
There are many types of tungsten. There is red thoriated tungsten. This was always the go-to for TIG welders ever since I think TIG, welders, TIG welding started. If you're doing DC work, tungsten was the go-to. I mean, thoriated tungsten was the go-to. <laughs> like, wait, what? This is basically 2% <laughs> thoriated tungsten. The problem with thoriated tungsten is this is technically radioactive. Um, there are safety precautions, especially when you're grinding this. You want to do this in a well-ventilated area. There are sheets for safety on this. I'm not getting into that with you. That is your responsibility if you're running thoriated tungsten. Here's what I would suggest for you. The majority of all tungstens are color-coded. This is called lanthanated tungsten or lanthiated tungsten. It is, it has the same properties as uh, thoriated tungsten, but this is not radioactive and safe to use. I would say for your money, this is gonna be the best compromise if you're just buying one pack of tungsten. This is pretty much the, uh, the jack of all trades as far as tungsten goes. This does AC, this does DC. This has really good heat properties as far as splitting. Um, people, of, I don't want to say older people, but people that run rectifier machines will tell you if you're running AC machine, you have to run green tungsten and you have to ball it up. If you are running a rectifier machine, that is true. If you are running any new current machine, you do not have to do that. I'm telling you that is a waste of your time. You can run a pointed lanthanated tungsten or there's all types of tungstens. Okay, so th these machines, these are captain machines, come with one piece of, I believe this is 1 16th, and this is serrated tungsten. Now, serrated tungsten is really good for starts and stops and low amperage use. So if you're doing, um, say if you're building turbo kits and you do like charge piping, exhaust piping, thinner materials, serrated tungsten is actually a very forgiving tungsten. Um, it is not good for higher amperage. Do not use this if you are maxing out your machine. A couple things will happen. The amperage actually changes the properties of this stuff and the ends probably will split. You will consume it faster. So today, I think for Jess, we are going to remove my radioactive thoriated tungsten. I appreciate that. <laughs> I just bought that as an example. And we're going to go with lanthanated tungsten. <laughs> And we're gonna go with the 330 seconds and this is what I suggest you guys do. If you grind tungsten, you can do it with a tungsten grinder. These used to be very expensive, they are not anymore. Um, Wait, these specifically for that? These are, this is literally made to sharpen tungsten. Huh. It changes the angle, you can change your angle in your pitch. You can also use a uh, grinder, standard grinder, but let me, preface that statement with when you grind on a grinder and you're, you're, you're sharpening tungsten, if your wheel goes this way, spins down like this, you don't want to go this way. You want to go this way against the wheel like that. Mm. You want the lines to do this. You don't want it to spiral around it because that will affect the flow of the electricity and it will make your puddle kind of erratic and it'll make the delivery erratic. You can actually see it in your welding helmet. TIG welding is all about mm -hmm. clean work. The cleaner your work can be, the cleaner your tungsten can be, the better quality puddle you're gonna have. When you are welding, this is the most hard, this is the hardest thing for a new welder. This is the discipline end of things. When you start welding and you dab and you get up, you get a little material on that tungsten, you're gonna stop immediately and you are gonna disassemble your torch and you're gonna resharpen this every single time. And if you don't, your welds will be terrible, you will never learn anything, and you will create this green hue as you travel. Mm. If you have any exposed skin, I promise you the most vicious sunburn you have ever seen in your <laughs> life. Sounds <laughs> we're gonna keep we're gonna talk about you're gonna keep your all your skin covered yes, when you're welding got it i tacked this together real quick for jess actually she ran the pedal i ran the torch um just to tack it so what we're gonna do is we are not going to be using filler 
on her first pass. We are going to just fuse the metal. Jess knows to keep, what are we doing? We're keeping, we're keeping the tip 45 degrees from your travel path. We are also going to manage the height of the tip and we're gonna to try to keep it consistent all the way across. And just for now, maybe we'll move in little circles to drag that puddle forward, okay? Now Jess understands she is not using the button on the torch, she is using the foot pedal, and the foot pedal will control your input of heat. Mm -hmm. So as you're welding, I'm gonna give you instruction on more pedal, less pedal, yep. or slower or faster, or keeping your, right, your tungsten Closer to my project. Closer to your project because you have a tendency to, to lift, lift away, it. right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we think this is going to go good. How do you feel about this? Uh, one to ten, where are you at? Comfort wise? Yes. Seven. Seven? <laughs> Guys, might, that's... I might be being a little that's optimistic. Inc that's incredible for Jess. She never goes with the seven off the rip. <laughs> All right. Fire up the arc, Captain. TIG 200P ACDC. She's going to spool up fans and then she's going to drop back down into her sit mode. Jess is covered all the way up her arms. Now, we as a family are very gingery. Pale. Pale. <laughs> this will burn you unmercifully if you have skin showing and you hit dab your tungsten. What are you going to do if you dab your tungsten? You're going to stop, stop and regrind your tungsten. What else is important? Making sure I'm comfortable when I'm welding. That's right. You want to be comfortable to be able to make your pass down your workpiece. And, and you're going to want to make sure your helmet mm -hmm. properly fits and you can drop it, right? You can drop it. You can lift it back up. It's going to stay. Make sure that thing is set up right. Now, what about, what are, what about your, your torch hose? I like it across my lap. I feel like I have more control over where I'm working. Right. So you guys might want to want you might want it over your shoulder, depending upon where your machine sits. You know, Jess is to the left of the machine, so I have a tendency just to let it hang next to my right leg. You guys need to figure out what is most comfortable for you, and that comes with seat time. So now, what we're going to do is, Jess is going to do a fusing pass just to get the feel of moving the torch, using the pedal with her dainty little feet and I am going to probably yell at her like she's holding a flashlight ah. and I'm working on some old junk car. Huh? I need good instructions. I don't do that. <laughs> I'm going to put you guys on a magna magnified lens with a shade 10 over you. I'm going to narrate. The only thing you're going to see is Jess's bead and her traveling in the puddle moving. And then we'll talk about it when she's done. Lean in hard. Yep. So make your little circle. Keep moving forward. You're actually doing well. I wish I could give you more direction, but I... Wow, okay. You need to be a little closer to your workpiece. You need to back out of that pedal just a little bit. No, a little... You gotta give it more than that. Yep, see, you lost arc. More pedal. Yep. Keep moving. Yep, keep moving forward. Very good. You want to keep that pet, that puddle with the same in uniform. Yep, keep moving forward. Now we're going to stop halfway, so what are we going to do? We're going to let off that pedal, but we're going to keep the torch in the place so the post purge can do its job. I still got the magnification lens on. <laughs> it's not very clear. I'm sorry, guys, but this is what she did. Now, granted, I tacked it, but she. this is just a fused weld. This is what you guys need to do starting off. Do not start with filler rod in your hand. You need to get this motion down and the puddle movement going first in order to be successful adding filler rod. All right, guys, so I think Jess was pretty successful with that. So what we did was we're going to take the same piece. Now, obviously, it's already hot, but we just flipped it over. So now what we're gonna try to do is have Jess start her own tack, move forward, and add filler rod dabbing as she goes. And I will, uh, I will give expert instruction. 
Let's hope. Let's hope. So, what do you think so far? Stressful. Stressful? <laughs> yeah. It's a lot to remember. A lot to keep so straight when you're moving. Fusing it, pretty easy, right? Yes. Adding the fillers when your hands have to do multiple Two things. Two different things, and my foot has to do something, and putting it all together. Right, so, so just did a couple tests here trying to add filler mm -hmm. and it's the cadence of m moving the puddle and dabbing moving and dabbing moving and dabbing now this was a this was a tragedy right here <laughs> but this is where she fused together and she did good I, i'm just the wrong lens guys i know you can see that now on this one she did very well from here to here she's a little hot because she's moving slow so she's you know carboning up the top so what she's gonna do on this one, we're gonna set you back up on, on the lens with the uh, welding lens in front of it. And we're gonna try to get her to move forward at a little bit faster speed and dab. So are you ready? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna do the best I can with not yelling. And I hope not to disappoint you. You never disappoint <laughs> me. Make a circle. You gotta get a bigger puddle going. There you go. Now add and move. Yep, add and move, add and move, add and move, very good, yep, add and move, add and move, add and move, perfect, very good, see how your puddle width is staying the same width, that's perfect, keep moving, move a little fast. you're going to have to move faster, because your heat's soaking, yep, or you got to take a little bit of pedal, just a little pedal out, and then make a circle when you go. Keep moving, you gotta move faster. Yep, keep going. Okay, just stop right there, pedal out, yep, and wait for the post purge to complete. All right guys, well, let's talk about this. Um, just had a little dab at the beginning and that's why you get this, this little discoloration here. Sometimes you can just you know, if it's a very light dab, it, you can power through. So she does have an elevated pass, which is okay. She's adding, she's trying to maintain her, her width through. Um, overall, that's a good start. So we're going to pull off the magnifier. <laughs> Look how big you are. <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk it over. <sighs> okay, post first bead interview yes so what do you think you did wrong what do you think you can do better and what do you think you did right i got a little too anxious at the beginning okay. and started adding filler when i didn't have a big enough puddle yet right that's correct that's correct but i think i got into a good groove and was very smooth in the middle part you were yeah it felt smooth Okay, that, see, that's, what, what, that's what's important for people to understand. This is all about feel. This is all about seat time. You have zero seat time. Mm -hmm. you, what, you guys, what you guys aren't seeing is the fact that the only thing that Jess has tried to weld was this pile of, of two plates. <laughs> She's never TIG welded before. I promise no. you this isn't, I mean, obviously she hasn't TIG welded before. Um, she's doing a really good job because uh, she has decent dexterity in her hands. It is about seat time. Don't get frustrated. Now, the contamination in the weld is from a couple things. There was a, there was a dab at the beginning, and then this is this is overheated from two things. Maybe a little too much pedal. You went a little too much on the pedal. Yeah. And not moving fast, fast enough, enough as you travel. So you're heat soaking, and then it's just coking up all the the metal. So. You know how to TIG weld now. The process is the same for almost every type of metal. Now we're going to go to aluminum. Stage two. Stage two. Stage two. Be right back. All right, guys. So Jess understands the process of uh, making a puddle, moving the puddle, and adding to the puddle. So um, she's going to continue to practice that. There is a learning curve here that requires seat time. I would suggest you guys start with mild steel, A, because it's cheap, and B, because it's more forgiving. 
Um, stainless has a tendency to blacken and coke up uh, horribly. I would not start with titanium. Um, I'm gonna take over for aluminum. So maybe Jess will do a little bit. You wanna do a little filming? Yeah. All right, so Jess is gonna do some filming. We'll knock out some beads on aluminum just so you guys can see it. And uh, maybe we'll do the whole, you know, green lens over the GoPro trick again. And uh, the, the welder, you know, when you weld an AC, it is loud. I ran a couple, like one test pass, because I've actually, this machine is brand new to us and I've never run it before. And uh, I think, Jess, you, what did you say? It was violent or you said it was scary? Intimidating. It's intimidating because <laughs> you get that high frequency buzz from an AC welder. So I don't think I'm going to try to talk over it. And I think we're just going to run the pass and then I'm going to talk about it afterwards with you guys. Just to give you the gist of it, it is the same process as welding mild steel. You're going to, you're going to initiate a puddle. So you're going to roll in, you're going to roll into your pedal a little harder to get the puddle moving. And then you're going to back out. Now with aluminum, aluminum moves better when it's got some heat in it. You can preheat aluminum and it does help weld, or you can initiate a puddle. You're gonna to have to put a ton of amps into it, so you're gonna really be hard on that puddle. Then you're gonna back out of it as it absorbs the heat, as it gets warm, and then you're gonna move that puddle. And when you add filler rod with aluminum, you do it definitively. It's not gonna be like, oh, I can just kind of tap it in. You force it into the puddle as you move. It has to be a very deliberate forced action, and then you need to pull back out so you don't ball up the tip of your filler rod. So I will do my best to show you guys that, and, uh, and then we'll discuss it. Sound good? Yes. Awesome. Uh, this is like our first time using this machine, but man, that's not bad considering this uh, this is scrap that was really kind of filthy that we just cleaned up. So a buddy of mine gave me that aluminum. Uh, it was left over from construction project he did. But, uh, you know, you hit it with the flap wheel. You clean it up the best you can. Obviously it has impurities in it because it was uh, used bracketry. But um, the result was good. The machine drops a good bead. Obviously, I'm kind of hurrying with this, but that's a pretty solid bead with aluminum. Um, the premise is the same, isn't it? What do you think? That looks amazing. It makes amazing. <laughs> well, I mean, it doesn't look that good, honestly. That's not very uniform, but as a beginner, it, that's a good bead. You know, if you guys can, you have to aggressively fill aluminum. You cannot daintily do it. You need to force that puddle and move. Bury that pot, that pedal back out. Manage your puddle and really force that aluminum filler rod. Post welding interview. <laughs> how how do you think today went overall with this learning process to TIG weld? So this process for me was a lot going on. My hands are doing two different things. I have to watch my foot on the pedal, not watch it, but think about what I'm doing with my foot. It's a lot of things going on and to remember what you need to do with what hand, etc. And then with his instructions, I have to hear that, process that information while my hands are doing something, while my foot's doing something. It's a lot going on, but I think if I continue to do this more often, those things become almost second nature and I'm not really thinking as much about it. So it reminds me of when he taught me how to snowboard how many years ago? I can't, 30 years ago? 30 years ago, same yeah. Same type of yeah. thing where I'm listening to instructions and trying to put that into my feet and make them do what I need to do. Same type of thing. Yeah, that's a good analogy. Um, when you learn anything, you're trying to run through in your head what you're supposed to be doing versus what you're trying to force your hands to do if it's second, it's not second nature. Um, I think you did great. Honestly, I think you did really well. I'm glad I didn't disappoint. You never disappoint, honey. You never disappoint. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of Mad Ginger Customs. Um, I hope you learned something. 
Uh, we answer questions and comments, so uh, comment away. Did this help you at all? Uh, did you want to see us do something different? We can obviously add to videos. Uh, we can do supplemental videos. Um, something that we need to discuss. Do you want to win a TIG welder? Do you want to win a MIG welder? It's Art Captain's anniversary in October, and they're doing a big giveaway. We are a partner with Art Captain, and uh, all you need to do is go find them on Facebook. Join their community page. You make a post, hashtag Art Captain Welder. Tell them about what you think. What do you like to weld? What would you use an Art Captain Welder for? And they're going to enter you to win. They have a TIG welder they're giving away. They have two MIG welders they're giving away. They got welding helmets they're giving away. So you might want, you might win one for free. I mean, who doesn't... I mean, you'd want a free TIG welder, wouldn't you? Sure. Sure. Now that you know how to use one. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, Jess is going to get more seat time. <laughs> Jess is going to be a better TIG welder every week. She's going to get more involved with projects with the welding. Uh, we're going to employ our MIG 200 and our TIG 200. Uh, both are wonderful machines. I love them. I got to be honest with you. I would tell you guys if I didn't like the machines. I haven't found anything I don't like yet. Uh, if I do, I do have an agreement with our captain. I have to be very honest. I told them that. They agreed. They said, hey, just run them and see how they go. And, and honestly, we've loved them. Um, I, I've turned into a pretty big fanboy. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. So uh, do the normal stuff for us, guys. Like and subscribe. If you could share our videos. If you got a new welder in your life and you think that our, our video would be beneficial, why don't you pass that along to them? And just like you saw, Jess has never TIG welded ever before. We taught her how to MIG weld six months ago. She's never MIG welded since. Right. So technically, she's MIG welded for one Once. day, and then she's TIG welded right now. That's it. And that's it. So just remember, guys, if we can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.